morning. Happy New Year. Welcome as we are on the precipice of the beginning of the spring semester. And thankfully, it's not 19 below zero. <laughs> and let's hope that we continue to see warmth. This is our seventh Assumption Day. We began this seven years ago. And the importance of a day like today rests on better understanding what gives value and meaning to an Assumption education. And this is relevant given the, very, the many challenges that higher education is facing today. The scrutiny that higher education across the board is experiencing is really a scrutiny that is forcing institutions to reflect on who they are, what their goal is, what their mission is, regardless of whether they are a religious institution or a non-religious institution. And what is happening, unfortunately, from my perspective, is that higher education is beginning to view itself completely in utilitarian terms. That the only purpose of higher education is to prepare students for a specific job. And we really lose sight of what higher education ought to be. And we lose our distinctiveness. Because in the end, we'll all look and sound like one another, and we will not all survive. I was at a meeting of uh, college presidents two weeks ago, and uh, the keynote speaker said to us that 25% of small colleges and universities will not exist in 10 years. And if we don't have a distinctive message, we will not survive. We're fortunate here. We're fortunate because we have a distinctive character from which we can draw both direction and inspiration. And that distinctiveness comes from our assumptionist character. Father Dalzan often reminded those involved in education that this task was not a job, but a mission. And it should be seen in the context of faith in his many talks to teachers, he wanted his listeners to discover how rich teaching could be if it was viewed in terms of education. <clears throat> A couple of phrases that he used to describe education. He said education is, quote, like an ongoing Pentecost because it has something to do with the outpouring of the Spirit in young minds and young hearts. He spoke about education as participating in the work of the creator. He said, and I quote, before each student, I need to repeat the words of the creator, let us make men and women in our image after our likeness. It's that transformative <laughs> nature of education. And finally, he said, Quote, by this great and magnificent work of education, we refashion the being of our students, end quote. Father Dalzon insisted on a teaching which formed the intelligence and educated the personality of the students by having them acquire character, which was a very important word for Father Dalzon, and one might say one of his favorite words. Education was meant to form people of character. The formation of young people rested on the courses they took, but not simply on the courses they took, but on the content of those courses. It rested on the educational activities outside the classroom that they participated in. It rested on an education in the faith. Content. But Father Dalzan was key because content was the formative dimension of the curriculum. It was not simply about facts and figures. It was not simply about a body of knowledge. But it was about the truths that could be discovered, about the life principles that could be assimilated by the students. It was a knowledge that was meant to lead to wisdom. And that's why a reflection like today is important. That's why a curriculum should not only be concerned with contemporary issues and contemporary culture, but with 
a classical culture with the great works of literature, with philosophical and theological questions, with an understanding of the past, with an understanding of our heritage as a Western institution and culture, on ideas that transform and that transcend time and place because they explore the essential questions of what it means to be human. Father Dalzon once said, faith and not today's fashionable sentimental education is what forms souls. I think we could make the same claim today in the many challenges we face in higher education, even though it sounds quite countercultural. But that's really what we're meant to be. We are, as an institution, meant to be countercultural. It is possible to form people of character. It is possible to form people of conviction. It is possible to form educated, intelligent, young people whose faith is solid and enlightened and who will be active in the public discourse that will shape the future of our society. So if we are going to be a distinctive Catholic liberal arts college that is rooted in our assumptionist tradition, if we are not going to be part of that 25% in 10 years, we need to make more vibrant the spirit of the assumption in all that we do, but especially in what we teach. Today's panel presentation, and I want to thank Father Dennis, Father Richard, Father Barry, and Father Roger for helping us enter into that conversation, helping us to reflect on what it means to be an Assumption School, an Assumptionist Education. So that we look forward to your presentations. Thank you. Thank you.